If you, if you want to make Nelly your life, then Fox is the best tool. For a while, he's kind of like this game, like, oh, this character, this evil character, he's the best character in the game and undefeatable. Fox has the best shield pressure, approach, and KO moves in the entire game. The year is 20XX. Everyone plays Fox. You can kind of play whatever game you want to play with him. You, you can just do stuff really fast, and it feels like you have complete control. Nice down A to save himself just from that one situation. But still, there it is. is! And there it is! The up smash! 3 1 Mango has come all the way back from loser's bracket. Uh, he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And just oh the my god! Get oh my god! Get off the stage! Oh, 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 oh wait, tech my. change, it's a grab! Oh. Okay, okay. Let's let's get it. and he gets it! it. Wow. I'm about to control it, dog! I'm about to control it! He forfeits! He forfeits! Going up against Fox isn't easy. But you know what is? Switching to Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Check out the link in the description below for more information. Now, back to the story of Fox. Fox McCloud was always destined to be god tier. Originally modeled after Inari, a Japanese fox god, the character was created for a 1993 SNES game called Star Fox. His time in that game and its sequels led Fox to develop a cult following. And by 1999, he was popular enough to find himself alongside some of Nintendo's most popular characters in Super Smash Bros. 64. Introducing Super Smash Bros., where all your favorite characters go toe to toe in one four player star studded slam fest only on Nintendo 64. While Smash was a mega success for Nintendo, Fox found himself living in the shadows of other characters in the game's cast. But that all changed in 2001 when Nintendo released Super Smash Bros. Melee a title that brought speed to the forefront of its gameplay. And being one of the game's fastest characters, capable of both attacking and recovering quickly, Fox established himself as one of the most efficient killers in the game. Playing Fox, you know, you have one of the biggest tool sets in the whole game. Uh, depending on your style of play, you can adapt it, adapt his toolkit however you like. You've seen players be successful uh, with a rushdown style as well as a zoning or more patient platform-based style. So his versatility is probably his uh, biggest strength. He, he gets messed up really hard. If, I don't know, if he gets hit, he just gets destroyed. But he, you can just do stuff really fast, and it feels like you have complete control as well. But despite having the ingredients for being the best character in the game, Fox still had a long way to go. For several years, the top honor belonged to Sheik, and the advantages of one character over the other were often contested among the pros. While there are several notable players like Chillin' Dude and Masashi who were pushing Fox's limits, other characters saw more success in tournament settings. That's gonna, that's gonna do it. That's gonna do it. Despite falling short during the early days of competitive melee, Fox remained an enticing challenge for players. He was an extremely technical character, one who demanded serious dedication and a whole lot of practice in order to master. And while his speed, combos, and damage output gave him an edge over pretty much every other character in the game, he also proved to be a bit of a gamble. He kind of just dies, no matter what. No matter what you get hit by, he just kind of dies. And that can be frustrating sometimes if you're not playing well. But luckily he has tools to allow you to kind of work around and play different styles so that it's not as uh, volatile and it doesn't as easily get like hit. It doesn't as easily get opened up. 
In spite of the glaring weaknesses in his kit, for those willing to put in the work, Fox was a treasure trove of untapped potential. And in 2004, players like Zelgadas began to unleash it in ways no one thought were possible. Yeah, a video like Shine Blind uh, came out a little bit before I got in the scene, but by then it was already one of the most uh, popular videos to show new players, uh, because this was uh, 2005, and just that use of Shine in particular was not apparent to a casual player playing back then, so it seemed like a really flashy playstyle, uh, but you know, also great combos, great music, like all the old DBR videos. Uh, so I actually think Shine Blind even holds up uh, somewhat to this day. The Melee community continued to find new ways to utilize Fox, and by mid-2006, with the emergence of players like Mewtwo King, PC Chris, and Korean DJ, Fox was finally getting the recognition he deserved. All right, PC with the whole stock advantage. DJ laying on the offense. Right here, right here. And really, really, really nice ledge guarding. That's See, not there it goes. He can like a bat out of hell. Yep. Yeah. Right there, Kanuri and DJ's edge guarding up. Missing with the forward B, and there it is, the up smash. Up, up smash. PC has won. Congratulations to PC, Chris. It was in July of that year that Fox was finally able to bump Sheik from the top spot and claim the melee throne for the first time. But it wasn't long before he found Jigglypuff and Falco Manes nipping at his heels. Punch him in the face! No! I coño! He's gonna get it. Fuck. It's I. And PP does it. Everyone's yelling. It's so hype. Fox had fallen into a rut, and players began to recognize that the only way to get him out of it was to dig deeper. That meant looking for new, innovative ways to increase shield pressure and improve his close-range fighting mechanics. And with so many world-class players throwing themselves behind the cause, Fox play ascended to a whole new level. Pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> that was sexy. Mango covered too many options. He's feeling himself. Done. He is trying to win this tournament. Three stocks. Oof. Okay. Nice. We're gonna go down to the wire. It's <gasps> like oh! Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa! Hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Fox's dominance became so prevalent that it even gave life to a community meme known as 20XX, a post-apocalyptic future in which you'd have no choice but to main Fox. Hacks, Aziz has this running joke about, um, uh, you see, so you know in Mega Man, like in the Mega Man intro, it's like, the year is 20XX. Yeah. Yeah. So Aziz, Aziz's thing is, the year is 20XX. Everyone plays Fox. <laughs> and there's this whole, like, post-apocalyptic universe that is built off of, like, Fox being the only viable character left. Yeah. And no one demonstrated the terrifying potential of 20XX better than Mango, whose wins at EVO 2013 and 2014 cemented Fox's position as the king of melee. Oh, good block, and then here goes a throw! But and again, again, avoiding it. Oh, but barely oh, nice. illusion. Oh, nice down A to save himself just from that one situation. But still, there it is! And there it is! The up smash! And Wobbles is gonna go down! 3-1 Mango has come all the way back. Train. And Mango no, does quite. not take it yet. He goes for the up throw up here. This time it hits, and we have our champion, Mango, first place here at Evolution 2014 for Super Smash Brothers Melee Singles. Around this time, Fox was the number one choice for more than half of the top 20 players. But that's not to say that all Fox mains were created equal. Players like Armada, Leffen, and Mango took Fox's skill ceiling and elevated it beyond what most could ever hope to achieve. And as the mechanical expertise of the top-level competitors ramped up, so did the physical demands playing Fox placed on them and anyone hoping to reach the elite ranks of Melee. Hax, the man behind 20XX, was considered one of the most technically gifted Foxes on the planet. But that mastery came at the cost of his hands. By a normal person's standards, my left hand and wrist are in very bad shape. But by my standards, they're fine. Meaning, like, I can get, I can do everything I want to do, basically. I can 
I can game no problem um, with the box, you know, with my custom controller. I can no longer use an analog stick, for example. So if I wanted to play this game uh, the traditional way, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, I also have very weak wrist flexion because they had to remove a uh, flexor tendon from my wrist and that comes with pretty severe uh, repercussions, but I, I accepted them because it had to be done. Hacks made the switch from Captain Falcon to Fox, exacerbating a pre-existing condition to the point where he had to undergo many surgeries and take a lengthy hiatus from Melee. The way I saw it, I was this player who had so much untapped potential and so much left to prove. Like, I really felt like if I had one more year of playing Fox, I, I, felt, I felt like I would have been the best in the world. But then all this hand stuff happened, and then we were just left wondering what, what could have been. Hax's predicament drew the community's attention towards just how grueling the grind could be. And in Melee, the quest for perfecting Fox might be the most punishing example of that grind. But, you know, it does take a toll on your hands, which potentially makes you able to practice less, and definitely makes you less consistent in tournament, under pressure, game five. I was dealing with this for like years, at least the wrist stuff, and um, I tried everything, dude. Like I went to physical therapy, I tried like all these different exercises, stretches, and that might have given like temporary relief. Same with my leg, like physical therapy didn't really help me at all. But in spite of the risk that Fox poses to players, he has never lost their favor. Up smash does not knock down Falcon if he's at zero. Right. But if you get one, oh my god, oh, he vanished oh, what that a, shine. What a shine. Wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying before, IBW just put together the sick combo to end game two. Wow. wow. He caught his jump and he got the up air. Dude, what the f***? Dude, what the f***? Dude, what the f***? See jabs? I'm wrong with the controller. Goku lasers in his face. I love the way Fat Goku plays. Up air! Yep, yep, yep. Oh wow, Shinebacker is gonna take the first game. It looks like. It Fat gets oh my god! Yo! He got a, a second game. I'm sorry. Gets a little, uh, little custom on the on the last stock there. Okay. Moki is playing out of the spine right now. Ice though with the edge guard opportunity. Oh, oh no! Get it. Oh, he got the up air and That's yeah, it. he gets it. And with the immediate time. Wow! And Moki. Representing Canada here makes it into top 16 winners, defeating Ice. Number 96. That number is not going to last that much longer. Fox being the most common character in both doubles and singles for many years added another unique challenge for those looking to main him. In terms of technical expertise, he's basically been figured out. But if tech was all Fox had to offer, he'd never have reached his iconic status in Melee. Yeah, I think as far as uh, specific tech skill uh, options, uh, uh, most of Fox, I feel like, has been figured out. People like Hax and Leffen, KJH have really labbed the character out to a great degree. But as far as strategy uh, goes and how you can uh, employ your tech skill in a match, I, I really think Fox has a really long way to go still. No matter what the future holds, Fox's impact on the game is undeniable. He's become such a staple, knowing how to use him is a must for top level players. I think like 40% of the top 20 plays him, or at least secondary sims. So no matter who's at the top, there's always gonna be a gigantic part of the game. Fox has become the face of competitive melee and its characteristic fast style of play. Yeah, I think Fox is just so iconic in melee because he's one of the characters that represents the extremely fast gameplay that Melee can offer, as well as the wide range of technical options. Uh, a lot of characters can do that in Melee, but Fox seems to exemplify it the most. He set the bar for what is possible in the game. But his toolkit's amazing, he's extremely fast, and you can kind of play whatever game you want to play with him, and it's almost always a plan that's at least somewhat capable of winning. He defined the divide between competitive and casual play. You will be punished hard every single time you make a mistake, which makes him quite bad at low level. He's basically for top level only. But if, if you want to, if you have dreams of being like the best player in the world, then is a great character to invest in. But most importantly, he created plenty of role models for the next generation. A lot of stuff you can do with this character that hasn't been done yet. 8%? 8%. <laughs> Come on. Oh! 
Armada has no shield. Armada has no shield! Weapon! Absolutely tearing through everyone today, Tove. Leppin is our EVO 2018 Super Smash Brothers Melee Champion. Hello, Ben. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.